reporters and had a lot of praise for his young quarterback's offseason. Give a listen. Yeah, I think Max done a great job. Uh, he's he's worked extremely hard. Uh, he's got a tremendous work ethic and uh, in all areas. Um, you know, I think there's a dramatic improvement. You know, he did a great job last year, but he's starting from a much, much higher point this year than, than where he started last year. So, you know, his, his off-season work has been significant, and I think everyone recognizes, um, you know, how, how well he prepares and how much further along he was than, than he was a year ago. It's pretty good. I mean, it, it, he's not someone who throws around a lot of praise easily, Bill. And so Mike Canavan taking a victory lap. You have been suggesting all offseason he's going to have a huge year. If people listened to me two days ago, they would have gotten much better odds on the Mac Jones MVP candidacy. I mean, they're going to be plummeting today after Coach Belichick. I mean, that's unbelievable praise coming from Bill B. But I'll say this. Mac Jones has a high floor and a high ceiling. He has a great work ethic. He led his team to the playoffs last year. Like, that gets buried quite a bit. He played well against the Bills. Remember, the Patriots' defense didn't force the Bills to punt once in that game. I think he's going to have an exceptional year. I think they have two really good running backs, two good tight ends, an underrated offensive line, and an underrated receiver group. So he's super high on Mac and on the Patriots. RC, are you? No. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not down on Mac. You know, I, I think Mac Jones is who he is, and I believe that he will improve this year. But I still believe that the, the, the physical limitations will be something that Mac Jones deals with throughout his career. But what I do like about what Bill Belichick says is that that seems very self-aware of Mac Jones, that I'm going to continue to work more, that I'm going to try to improve. We saw him improve his body throughout the offseason. Now you'll be more agile. Now you'll be more durable, maybe have a little bit more ability, more mobility in the pocket. Mac Jones is a professional, and I think this is the exact opposite of what we were talking about with Kyler Murray, mm. that someone like Bill Belichick, who is a workaholic, who is a football junkie, and has had Tom Brady for most of his career with the Patriots now has a guy who he feels prepares exactly like that and I think that's what you hear in Coach Belichick's praise. I talked to somebody in their building yesterday and asked about Mac in the offseason and the word he said was what's showing up really more than anything is leadership. He's gotten a lot of attention for kind of flying around the country and throwing with different receivers but this person I talked to said it's pretty much it didn't shock any of us because it's what he does when he's here. He'll round up whoever's here and go out to some high school field. So so they've been really impressed I mean, everything, look, if they had to do a contract with Mac right now, they would not have to put in uh, a clause about, you know, <laughs> having a study. Like, they, they're very impressed with everything he's done to prepare. They're authentically impressed with it. They're excited about him. Whenever I've asked about the offensive coaching staff issues, right, like the, the part of the response is like, the quarterback, we think, is going to be good enough that this isn't going to be a major problem. Well, look, we'll see. The conventional wisdom right now is not particularly high on New England. Uh, a lot of people internally, and Mike Tannenbaum seem to be. We'll see which side of that one. The Eagles made some acquisitions. Will Jalen Hurts be better, worse, or the same? Absolutely better. He better be, right? They got A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Hard to think of a better pair than that. Dallas Goder is a little bit of an underrated tight end, so they are loaded. They have an exceptional offensive line. Offensive play caller for a head coach. If I'm a young quarterback, I couldn't think of a better situation than the one that Jalen Hurts is in. I mean, how about the Dolphins and the, the situation their young quarterback is in? Graziano, will Tyreek Hill be better, worse, or the same in Miami? I, I mean, worse. Look, I mean, when he was with Patrick Mahomes, it was two transcendent talents working together, elevating each other. Uh, even if you think Tua Tungavailoa is going to be a good NFL quarterback, I don't think he's going to be Patrick Mahomes. So the combination of Mahomes and Hill, I think, produced magic on a level that few combinations could. Yeah. So I think Hill will probably not have the same level of success with Tua, even if Tua breaks out and has a big year. Well, you may not think he's on the same level as Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> but Tyreek Hill seems very, very high on Tua. Here was Tyreek yesterday on first take. Listen to this exchange. I just feel like a lot of people haven't seen – you know, young to his full potential. You know, I see a lot of similarities when, when I look at him and when I see Patrick. You had an opportunity to pick between Tua or pick between Zach Wilson, and you decided South Beach instead of New York. What was the, what, what was the determining factor in that? I said it once, and I'll say, say it again. You know, Zach, Zach Wilson is a dog, but I really play with the most accurate quarterback in the NFL, dog. Okay, right. So, uh, first, Tyreek, I want my glasses back. Second, <laughs> uh, what? Tyreek's trolling. 
Yeah, he's, he's, he's trolling now. <laughs> and listen, and I, and I said it before. Listen, I'm a podcaster now, Greeny. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Right? You got to say things that the people want to keep replaying the hits. <laughs> right. Right? So the first week he had his show, he said something about Tua and Patrick. And it was all over the world. You guys were talking about sure. this and this. Yeah. The second week, they had Rick Ross on the show. Nobody said nothing, right? <laughs> so he came back the next week, and he said something about Tua, that Tua had to come out and play well and do a lot of stuff. This was a proven year. And guess what? He was back on Get Up. Mm -hmm. That's the point. But I, I do think this, right? And, and, and this is like all jokes aside. He's now the face of this franchise. Whether it be by money, whether it be by popularity, fame, whatever it is, Tyreek Hill is now the man on this team. He wasn't going to be bigger than Patrick Mahomes in Kansas right. City. He wasn't going to be bigger than Travis Kelsey in, in Kansas City. Even Tyron Matthew, to an extent, when it comes to leadership. Now there's a microphone in front of Tyreek each and every week because he's the most known, popular player on that team. And I think now he's starting to feel himself a little bit. It's like with the change of scenery came a change of personality. With the green in the bank came an opportunity. Now I can really be me. Mm. And he says this thing about Tua, and we say, oh, I like that. And he was like, oh, they keep talking about me. My face is everywhere. I haven't even caught a pass in Miami, and Greeny can't stop putting my clips on Get Up. I'm going to say it again. And so I think every time he says it, he, he he's, he's, he's starting to want to believe it, but he knows, just like we know, that even if Tua Tungvaluwa has this breakout year, the guy that you see throwing in OTAs when nobody can sack him, when they're not shoulder yeah. pads on, when they blow the whistle, they can run by you, then Tyreek can get wide open, and now you can throw it to him and pitch, pitch and catch. That's not what you get inside of stadiums. I think Tua Tungvaluwa is going to have a breakout year. I'm not going to say that he's going to be better than Patrick Mahomes and for sure as heck not going to say he's the most accurate quarterback in the world. All the stuff that Tyreek is saying, though, does it, is it, does it help Tua? Does it harm him in any way? Is, is, does it have any impact? Yeah, I think it hurts. I think Tyreek's mm. intention is an A+. Plus. I think the execution is really poor because you're just bringing more attention. This is a really well-built team with a massive question mark at quarterback. Mm. And they're probably going to be the third best team, in my opinion, in the division because of the quarterback. So if you're Tyreek Hill, I understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to build up a guy that's had a very inconsistent beginning to his career. But you can do it by talking about all your teammates and what you're going to do collectively. And you're just putting a bigger target onto his back. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I kind of disagree with the idea that there's any potential harm in it because I don't think the Dolphins are going to evaluate Tua based on mm. how he performs relative to Tyreek Hill's off-season <laughs> comments. Like, I, I don't mean to be <laughs> funny, but you're right. I mean, I right. think that's, so I think he's trying to pump his guy up, right? And, and I think that, that, that maybe Tua could benefit from that. He's talking about Tua's potential. Like, Tua's potential is not really – I mean, he was the five pick. Yeah. Like, he's not – he wasn't some, like, some fourth rounder that, you know, oh, he's better than you think. He's supposed to be really, really good. And if he's not, the Dolphins are in a lot of trouble. So I think this is an organization and a player who's the, the now, as you say, the face of it, trying to do everything they can to make this, this young man feel as good as possible about himself going into a well, crucial I, year. I, I think – I believe that's telling as well, though. Yeah. Right? If, if oh, we yeah. feel like the, the reason that we may have not have heard Tyreek speak this much or this highly of about Patrick Mahomes, which he definitely never said bad things and he said great things about him, was because the rest of the world were, were saying those things, were saying those things too. Mm -hmm. And so once it became common knowledge, now if Tyreek Hill says, yeah, Patrick's the best player in the world, we don't really, it's not really, it doesn't touch us, right? It doesn't yeah. reach as many people. But with the question marks around Tua and him constantly saying it, I think it does put at least the eyes or more eyes on Tua Tungvaluwa. And speaking of the podcasting, uh, Kevin Hart on the pivot this week? Yeah, today. Today. 12 o'clock. So, what's he think about Tua? We have that as well. I didn't well, ask him. <laughs> Tune in and find out. You don't have, you don't have his take on Tyree Kill and no, Tua? Okay. I, do, I do have it on the Philadelphia Eagles, though. Okay. Yeah. I'll so, bet. we'll get that. We'll see what he thinks about Jalen Hurts, whether he'll be better or worse or the same. In the meantime, as we continue, there are a lot of.